Hey everybody, this is Keith from the Mercer County Library System. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Zoom. Uh, Zoom is a very popular audio and video conferencing platform that allows you to talk with other people in real time, whether it's family, friends, or coworkers. Um, Zoom membership is free, registration is simple, and the software is very easy to use. Um, so today I'm gonna just give you first a kind of a general overview of what Zoom is and what it allows you to do. After that, I'm gonna take you over to the Zoom website where I'm gonna show you how to register for an account, um, download the app, and also I'm actually gonna show you what Zoom looks like on the screen when you're using it. Okay, now just a quick disclaimer here, the, uh, the version I'll be using is the browser-based version, which is just a little different than the app. So it's, it might look a little different than what you see later, um, but just know that it is generally the same uh, window, the same screen that you will see when you use the Zoom app, okay? And then at the end, I'm also gonna show you the Zoom Help Center on their website, which is a really great, uh, basically a big, great suite of resources um, including uh, video tutorials and a lot of frequently asked questions that answer pretty much any question you can think of when you are using Zoom. So let's begin. Zoom allows you to hold real-time video chats with multiple participants. In fact, with free membership, you can have up to 100 participants. You can choose between video and audio, just video or just audio. So many people are a little bit uncomfortable with having their face on the screen. So just know that with Zoom, you don't have to have the video enabled. You can just use audio if you'd like. In fact, you don't have to have either one turned on. You can just sit and watch if that's what you prefer. You can record your chats and save them locally on your computer. Now you do need the app on your computer to do that. Just know that you cannot record with the browser-based version. You do need the app installed on your computer. You can share your screen for demonstrations. So not only can you talk to other people, but you can also bring up something on your computer screen and show them what you're doing. And you can schedule private meetings that are password protected. So let's talk about what you need to use Zoom. First of all, you need a personal computer or mobile device, whether a smartphone or a tablet. With a computer, you need an internet connection with a minimum bandwidth of 800 kilobytes per second. Now, if you're not sure about how fast your internet connection is, I encourage you to visit this website, speedtest.net. In just about a minute, it will tell you exactly how fast your upload and download speeds are on your uh, internet connection. For computers, you'll need Windows XP with Service Pack 3 or later. If you're a Mac user, you'll need Mac OS 10.7 or later. So you can always visit your system information details on your computer to see exactly what operating system you're using and what specific version it is. For mobile devices and tablets, you could use the iOS or Android device. You can also use a Windows Surface Pro 2 or, or higher running Windows 8.1 or higher. Zoom also works on BlackBerry devices. You'll need for your browser any of these choices here. Okay, you can pretty much use any internet browser with Zoom. Um, we see Internet Explorer 11 or higher, Microsoft Edge 12 or higher, Safari 7 or higher, Firefox or Chrome. Now for video, you will of course need a camera. Nowadays, computers often come with them built in, so there's an internal camera um, many times. Now, if you don't have an internal camera, you can always purchase an external webcam that you connect via your, your USB drive. Um, webcams are very easy to come by. You can find them online at an electronics store or really any store with an electronics department. And you can find them very affordably.
Now for audio, you will need a microphone, which typically comes built into the computer. Um, but it, just like a uh, webcam, you can buy an external microphone and connect it via the USB drive. Now to access Zoom, first thing you have to do is create a Zoom account at zoom.com. Okay, it's very simple. Um, it's very quick, only takes a couple minutes and you're good to go. At that point, you'll choose either Zoom Basic, which is free, or, or one of the paid memberships, which are Zoom Pro, Zoom Business, or Zoom Enterprise. And those start at $14.99 a month and go up with each level. Uh, but I will say that the free version, the basic version, is very versatile, and it's gonna have most likely everything you're gonna need anyway. So unless you're really part of a business, there's really no need to have to upgrade to one of the paid memberships. Um, now, if you're going to use the app, you'll have to download the Zoom, the Zoom app onto your computer or mobile device, okay? And Zoom often refers to it as the desktop client, okay? The app, same thing. So you can download that and then launch it from your computer or mobile device, just like any other program. Another option is to just launch a Zoom from your web browser, um, and Zoom usually refers to that as the web portal. Um, sometimes it's a little tricky to launch from the web browser. So in a little bit, I'll show you how to, um, a sort, of, a, sort of a little workaround in order to do that. So the Zoom Basic, okay, the free membership, it allows you to do a lot of things. You can host up to 100 participants. And by participants, I'm referring to anybody else but you. You can have meetings up to 40 minutes long when three or more people, including yourself, are in attendance. Okay, after that 40 minutes, Zoom will just time out, um, but you can basically just start a new meeting if you want to continue on. Okay, now one-to-one -one meetings, if it's just you and somebody else, you, those are basically unlimited. You can host instant or schedule meetings. So you can either just on the fly say, I want to start a meeting right now and then invite people, or you can schedule a meeting to start at a certain time and then you would invite people and then they would know, you know, at 12 o'clock today, so-and-so is having a Zoom meeting. With Zoom Basic, you can share your screen. So like I said before, that means you can do things like show pictures, you can show websites, you can show demonstrations. So if you're showing somebody how to use something, um, maybe like a, a Microsoft Office program, you can show them an on-screen demonstration using the share screen feature. Now, you can also record video and audio and save it onto your computer, which is really helpful, again, especially for those demonstrations. Now, quick note here that mobile devices, if you're going, if you want to record video and audio on a mobile device, you need to have cloud storage to store that, okay? Now, with the cloud storage, that comes with a cost. So, you, you will need the pro membership or higher in order to have cloud storage. So, if, you, if you're interested in recording um, video and audio with Zoom, um, you're probably better off using it on the computer. That way you can save it to your computer for free. Now you can hold private or group chats as well. Okay, so these are basically just your um, traditional text-based chats, just like you um, probably used in the past. And you can do even more. So again, there's this term Zoom host. So that basically just means the person that is starting this meeting. So as the Zoom host, you have basically a number of privileges that the other participants do not have. So you can schedule meetings or start them instantly. Now, a big thing is that you can determine the amount of control participants have. And this is, this is especially useful in more like a formal or business setting if you wanna kind of keep tight control over how the meeting is run. So for example, you can adjust screen sharing privileges. You can determine if only you can share your screen or you can allow others to share their screens as well. That's up to you as the host. You can mute specific participants if you need to. So if, if there's just a lot of people and you wanna cut down on chatter, you can always um, mute all and then just allow a couple people to have volume or to have audio. That way, you know, you just cut down on all the sounds crossing into each other. You can control how many participants enter the meeting and when. So Zoom refers to this as a waiting room. So in other words, you can invite, let's say 20 people, but 
maybe 10 of those people, you're going to keep sort of in a queue and not allow them to enter the meeting until a certain point. Again, just to, just to um, maintain sort of crowd control and cut down on any um, interfering chatter or video or anything like that. You can also allow others to record meetings. Okay, as a default, they usually can't, um, but if, 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 they, if a participant says, I want, I'd like to record this, you can make that determination as the host. As a host, you can also assign co-hosts, and they enjoy most of the host privileges, but not all. As a Zoom host, you are the only one that can end a meeting. Not even a co-host can end a meeting, okay? People can leave a meeting, but in terms of ending it, only the host can do that. Now, as a participant, you can, of course, join a meeting. You can mute yourself if you want. And you could still choose whether you want to enable audio and video, just audio, just video, or neither if you just want to watch. Okay, so um, even as a participant, you don't need host approval to do that. You can just choose in, in what fashion or what medium you want to participate in this meeting. You can change your video display, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now, an important note here is that you do not need a Zoom account to join a meeting. So in other words, if you just want to be a participant in a meeting, you don't actually need an account. You just need the password from the host. You would just go to zoom.com, click join meeting, put in that password, and then voila, you're part of that meeting. Okay, so you don't need a Zoom account to join a meeting. Now, um, with Zoom, you can choose among a bunch of different video display types. So there's always full screen, which means the video just fills your entire computer or mobile screen. There's also a windowed screen, which means that the, um, the window controls like um, minimize, restore down, okay, those buttons are still there. And other controls, like for if you're using Windows, the start menu, for example, your taskbar, those things remain present. Okay, so you still have access to some of those window controls um, while the video is um, in while the video is streaming. Now, um, there's also something called the active speaker display, um, and this so when you have meetings with three or more people, a large video window will switch between the person currently speaking. So Zoom just kind of determines who is doing most of the talking right now and the window will automatically enlarge around that specific person. Okay, if you don't like active speaker, you can also choose gallery view, um, which basically will just show up to 49 participants in one display. And then if there are more than 49, there is an arrow that allows you to scroll down through the rest of the participants. Because remember, a free membership allows it for 100. So um, anything over 49, you just have to scroll down and you can see all of them. There's also something called a mini window. Um, so in situations where you're using Zoom, but also doing other things on the computer, maybe you're browsing the web or you're reading some sort of document, um, you can minimize the Zoom window to a mini window and place it wherever you want on the computer display area. And then you can always just enlarge it and go back to some sort of windowed or full screen view whenever you want. But if you're doing something else simultaneously, um, you can always just shrink it down to that mini window. Okay, especially with screen sharing, you'll see that that is the sort of default display. You get that little mini window. So speaking of screen sharing, I just wanted to give you one more quick note here. Um, a lot of people get anxiety, particularly about video. Okay, so remember that first of all, you do not need to have your video enabled in order to participate in a Zoom meeting. Now with screen sharing, if you're doing some sort of demonstration, you may have noticed that you get that little mini window and so you are, so your video, your face is part of that demonstration. However, you can turn that off, okay? So if you wanted to do some kind of demonstration, um, screen sharing is often used in conjunction with recording so that you can record on screen demonstrations, but you do not need to record yourself on the video. Find the mini window displaying your face and simply click on the minimize icon. When you point at it, it will say hide thumbnail video. Okay, so just a quick recap about um, the features of Zoom here. So Zoom is an audio and video conferencing platform. The basic membership is free and it's very versatile in its functionality. Zoom can be accessed on your computer via the Zoom desktop client. 
or the web browser. You can also access Zoom on your mobile device, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet, using the Zoom app. Hosts can schedule and start meetings. They have some control over what participants can and can't do in a meeting. Hosts and participants can conference with audio and video, just audio, just video, or neither. As a participant, remember you do not need a Zoom account to join a meeting. And hosts and participants can choose among a, a number of different video displays, whichever works best for the individual. And last but not least, other features include chat, screen sharing, and recording. Okay, so here we are on the Zoom uh, main website. So I went to my browser here. Um, I'm currently using Google Chrome for my web browser. I typed in zoom.com into my address bar up here and it took me right to this uh, main homepage on the Zoom website. You'll notice that it defaulted to uh, zoom.us up here. Um, don't worry about that, zoom.com works just fine. It just, it's just gonna default to that specific uh, web address. It's just gonna redirect you there automatically. So just type in zoom.com and it will take you right here. So I'm just gonna uh, kind of briefly go over the steps to register for an account. Um, also, just show you real quick how to um, where to go to download the desktop client or app, whatever you want to call it, and it's it's also going to give you a little preview of what the app actually looks like, uh, which will be really helpful. And then I'm just going to show you some um, some of those great resources that Zoom offers for um, you know for troubleshooting or for any other questions you might have about using the Zoom service. So. Um, here I am on the main page, and you'll see right up here in the top right in this toolbar, um, it says sign up. It's free right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what it's doing is it's going to first ask you to verify um, your date of birth, okay, just to, just to uh, verify that you are an adult. So I'm just going to put in a birthday here. I'll click continue. And then it takes me to this page to, um, to uh, excuse me, to input my email address that's gonna be linked to this account. So it says work email address. Uh, you can use your own private email address, that's fine. Um, so I could type in my email address here. Oops, sorry about that. I would click sign up and then what it's gonna do is it's going to send me an activation link to my email account. Okay, so what I've done was actually I went ahead before this and already um, started to set up an account. So I already have that act activation link in my email. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to leave this uh, sign up page. I'm going to go back to the main page for a second here. And I'm going to quickly move over to my email and show you that activation link. Okay, right here it says, please activate your Zoom account. I'm going to click on this. And right here it says activate account. I'm going to click on that button. Let's see what it does. All right, so now it's going to ask me a few more questions. Um, as you can see, it took me back to um, a, a Zoom web page. So it says, uh, are you signing up on behalf of a school? Obviously, I'm not, so I'm going to click no. Okay, now um, it says well, your account has been successfully created. So now it just needs me to put in my name and create a password. Okay, pretty simple stuff. So I'm just going to put first and last name. I'll create a password here. As you can see, all the password requirements are right down here underneath. I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm it. Now click continue. Okay, now it's just, um, it's asking me to invite colleagues um, to create their own Zoom account as well. Um, so this is just for if maybe you're creating an account and you want your other you know, uh, family members to create accounts as well, you can basically um, send them little invitations and then they if they want to they can set up their zoom accounts um, But for now, we're just going to skip over this step So I'm just going to uh, click in this little I'm not a robot button here. And I'll click skip this step All right, and then I come to this page. It says excellent now. It's time to start meeting. So it just says start your test meeting Okay um, And before I click start meeting now, I'm going to go to my account Okay, so what happens is uh, you basically just create your Zoom account and 
It gives you a number of information. This is just my profile information. All this is accessible in that same toolbar at the top to the right where it says sign up. Now it just has um, the little silhouette here. And this is my personal Zoom account. So at any time you can click on this and it will take you to this page you're looking at right now. And you'll see on the left side here, a number of different menu options um, through which you can uh, control various things about your specific meetings. Okay, a couple um, things to point out here in this meetings uh, module here, you'll see that I can schedule a new meeting, um, which means I can basically just set up the start time and then um, the, I can assign a topic. And then anyone I invite to that meeting will get some sort of notification saying, for example, there's a meeting today at four o'clock on this topic, and then those people can sign in at that time. Okay, I can also, you can always start a meeting on the fly whenever you want, and you'll see up here at the top, there is an option for host a meeting. And that, that's how you can just kind of start one off right away. Okay, and this will link to your app on your computer. So if you have the app installed, um, it's going to default to that app instead of uh, launching it from the browser. And I'm going to show you that in just one second, the difference between the two. Um, also on the left here, you'll see recordings. Now, if you were to uh, record any meetings, um, you can record those either to, as I said earlier, the cloud, the Zoom cloud, or to your computer under local. Now, cloud recordings does require a paid membership. So if you click on the local recordings here, now, if I was to record any meeting, it would show up as a sort of history in this list here. Okay, now remember, you can only record them with the actual app. Um, the browser will not allow you to record a meeting. So you would have to use the app, record it, and then it would show up in your history here. Okay. And last but not least, on the left here under personal, I'm gonna look at settings very quickly. And this is where you can just set up a number of different settings. Um, I'm gonna click on in meeting basic, that refers to basic membership. And this is where you can kind of set up those options for other participants. So you can allow participants to have certain privileges. For example, private chat. I can allow meeting participants to send a private one-on-one -on -one message to another participant. I can turn that off if I want, or I can leave it on. Um, so this is basically where you can set up those different options. Um, here's screen sharing. So I can, um, I can allow participants to have it to um, start a screen share, or I can just leave it host only. So only I can share a screen. Okay, things like that. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top here. Okay, and also recording, I'm gonna click on this little option here. And um, I could set my recording up to be automatic. So whenever um, I'm in the app and, I'm, and I launch a meeting, it will automatically record. I don't have to go through the steps of manually starting the recording process. So that's always another option too. Okay, so now that, we've, now that I've kind of gone over this uh, account page here, um, and keep in mind, a lot of these things that I'm showing you are only accessible through the website like this. Um, you're not gonna find them in the app itself, so you will have to come to the zoom.com website to set all this up. But again, it will sync it to your app, okay? The two are always connected. So now I'm gonna go back up to this top toolbar here, and I'm going to go to host a meeting. So let's say I wanna start a meeting, and I'm gonna click on with video off, and that just means that it's going to, when the meeting starts, my video camera will not be turned on until until I turn it on. Okay, it's not just gonna be turned on automatically. So I'm gonna click with the video off. And now I come to this, okay? And you can see up, the, up at the top here, it says um, that the website wants to open this application. Now, I already have this application on my computer. Okay, um, so a couple things here. First of all, if you haven't already downloaded the app through the website, you can do it now. So you can always start, go to start a meeting and then download the app. And then it would basically just take you through the steps to then start the meeting once the app is already downloaded. Okay, so again, you could do it either in either order. You can download the app and then start a meeting from the app or just start a meeting from the website and then it will take you through the steps to download the app first and then you can start a meeting from there. Now, 
just for the sake of being able to show you kind of what Zoom looks like, I'm going to launch it from my web browser. That's the only way I can really get it to record on my end. Now, if you ever want to use it from the browser, it's sort of a little workaround you have to do. So just kind of pay attention for one second. I'm going to go up here and click cancel. I'm going to come back down here where it says click here to launch meeting. I'm going to click on that. I get this prompt again. I'm going to click cancel a second time. Now you'll notice a new option down here where it says, if you cannot download or run the application, start from your browser. So I'm kind of tricking the website into thinking that I don't have the app. So I'm just gonna click start from your browser now. Okay, so now what you're looking at is basically what the Zoom uh, video conference software looks like on your end. So I am a host and this is what it's gonna look like. Um, now, the app looks very similar to what you see here. There are a few extra things that the app has that you're not gonna see on this. Um, but I just wanted to show you this to kind of give you an idea of what you'll be dealing with once you do use the Zoom uh, app, okay? Um, you'll see this is the main video area here. And down here are a number of different uh, options. So we have join audio and start video over here. Um, that's how I can manually turn my video and audio off. Okay, um, and then we have a few other options here. I have security, um, and some of those options I was discussing earlier, I can control um, right now um, from here as well. So I can allow participants to share the screen, chat, and rename themselves, or I can turn those off if I want to. Here's the option for a waiting room. Again, sort of a way to control the amount of people that are coming in the meeting at any one time. Okay, um, if I click on manage participants, it's gonna open this, uh, this right pane over here. Um, and any participants that are in the meeting will be shown in, on, in this window over here. And you'll see that if I point at, for example, I'm pointing at my name, I can rename myself. I can also click on more. Um, I can start the video that way. This is also where I can go to um, eventually, once my audio is turned on, I can mute myself as well. Okay, down here I can also, you'll see at the bottom as a host, I can mute um, everybody on my end if, if I choose to. I can also invite more people here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on this little arrow here and click close just to get rid of that little window. The next option over is share screen. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and let's see if it will show, there it is. Um, so from here, and this is very much similar to how it looks in the app, I can share a screen. So I can click on application window, for example. And if I had something that I was showing somebody, for example, it says budget right here, April 2020, this is an Excel spreadsheet. I could click on this and launch another application. And then all the participants will be viewing my screen, exactly what I'm doing on my screen in real time. Okay. And again, you can allow other participants to do that, or you can deny that, and you're the only person that could do it. So it's, that's completely up to you. I'm just gonna go, go, to go ahead down here, click on cancel. Next over is the chat button. And this is where you can go to, again, it's gonna open up on the right here, and I could chat to everyone, or uh, excuse me, a specific person as well. That's just like a normal text-based chat. Okay, now one thing to note with the, uh, when you're using it in the browser, I'm gonna click on join audio. I just wanna see what happens here. Um, just take note with your browser, sometimes you do need to give permission uh, to the browser to access your microphone and possibly your camera as well. In those cases, if you go up to your address bar and click on the little lock here, you will see, uh, for instance, in Google Chrome, it tells me right here, camera, and microphone. I could allow it, I could block it, or I could set it to ask, which means that every other time I sign on to the web browser, it's going to ask me each time. But if I click on allow, then it's just going to allow it every single time, and I won't have to go through this again. Okay, so um, all web browsers will have something similar to this. It might say settings, um, something like that, but generally this is how you access that information if you need to give the browser permission to access your camera and microphone. Okay, and last but not least, of course, um, 
you know, let me click on that again, doing audio by computer. Okay, and there we go. Um, and you'll see that down here now it says mute. So I could always just control from here myself. I could mute myself if I want, um, and then unmute as many times as I need to. Now, if I click on start video, of course, oh, see it's one second here. Okay, unfortunately, it's not gonna show me the video only because I'm using the app currently um, with another account. So I can't use uh, two videos at the same time. However, for, however if I was to uh, click on this normally, start video, it would then, uh, my camera would turn on and it would show me on the screen. Okay, and then just like audio, I can turn it off and on as many times as I need to back and forth. Okay. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is down here on the bottom right, you will see leave meeting. So whenever you're done with a meeting, um, you would click this. Now, um, it looks very similar to what's in the app. Um, I believe the app says, um, it might say end meeting as well, um, but in this browser version, it just says leave meeting. Now, as a participant, I could always just leave the meeting whenever I want to, but as a host, only I can actually end the meeting completely. So when I click on this, it's giving me two options. I can either end the meeting or leave it. So obviously, since I'm the host, I'm going to go ahead and just end this meeting for everybody. We'll click on that. And then it goes away, and now it just says, thank you for attending the meeting. Okay, now the only thing I really, the, the, the main thing I was not able to show you with that browser was the recording function, because again, you can only record if you're using the uh, desktop client or the app, okay, because it's gonna download directly to your computer. Um, so if you ever use the app, you'll see that there is a big record button at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you're in share screen mode, you'll see record under um, more options, okay? Now, speaking of trying to figure out some of these things on your own, uh, the last thing I wanna show you is just the really great uh, support center that Zoom has for its customers. So you'll see at the, I'm still on the Zoom website here, you'll see at the top, on the top right here, there are a couple of choices. Um, we have resources and we have support. Now resource the resource drop down here will take you to kind of more specific things right off the bat like video tutorials um an faq section right here and you also see the option for download zoom client so this is what i was talking about earlier you could always download the zoom app um, first thing before you ever even start meeting and this is where you would do it um, but instead of going here i'm going to go over here to support and just click on support and what it's going to do is it's going to launch um, a new tab up here Okay, and it takes me to what's called the Zoom Help Center. And you'll see that all the different um, sort of FAQs and tutorials are arranged by topic. Okay, so it's popular topics here, and it has a number of general topics. So I'm going to click on Getting Started, for example. And it just takes me to um, a number of menu options dedicated to getting started with the app if you're using it for the very first time and you'll see it's further arranged by desktop um, if you're using the mobile app they have they have um, information on that a number of different training exercises and a frequently asked questions page okay and all those uh, topics we saw before with the little pictures those are available right from here as well i don't have to go back to that main page i can just click on the next topic if i need to from the screen um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to go back real quick to the Zoom Help Center, the main page. And one more thing I wanted to show you here was this section that says one minute video in introductions. Um, these are great little one minute video tutorials that just give you um, really helpful information about, again, just those popular Zoom topics and popular questions. Um, so when you're first getting started with the Zoom app, um, I encourage you to visit this page whether you have um, just a general question, you're wondering about something, or if you hit some sort of roadblock and you're trying to troubleshoot, um, these resources are very helpful. Um, and they'll point you to, you know, common problems, things people have, things like maybe they're having a problem with their audio, um, the video's not working, um, they're getting echo on their end, things like that. Um, Zoom is very, very detailed in terms of um, how far it goes into giving you that information, okay? Um, it's, it's very granular, very nuanced. 
And I'm sure you'll be able to find that just from this help center here. Okay, so I hope uh, this Zoom video was helpful. And if you're using Zoom for the first time, um, good luck. And um, I encourage you to use it to, you know, keep in touch with family and friends. It's just a great way to, uh, you know, just have a friendly chat every so often and just see how everyone's doing. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching and take care.